We are our own worst enemy. It's a saying that might help us conquer our fear of failure or large stinging insects. But Mazda seems to have taken the phrase literally. $800, that'll buy you a base iPhone, and it's also roughly the price difference between an equivalent Mazda 3 hatchback and a CX-30. However, the CX-30 comes standard with all-wheel drive, more ground clearance, and more cargo space. The 3 is a great car, but on paper, the CX-30 makes much more sense. But what about in practice? On the surface, you can pick from a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated engine or a turbocharged variant. Thankfully, the car gods have given us a manual transmission for the three, but a vast majority will come with a six-speed automatic. The features across light trims are identical too, which isn't a bad thing. LED projector headlights, alloy wheels, they're standard. Skip the base and you'll get proximity entry and rain-sensing windshield wipers. So where do they differ? Well, the CX-30 can be had with a power rear tailgate, and the Mazda 3 can be had as a sedan, which improves visibility and costs a little less. I also prefer the looks of the 3. It's classy, upscale, and original for a compact. Whereas the CX-30 looks like an underaged Mazda 3 wearing a shoddy disguise as it tries to get alcohol at the bowling alley. Those are just my thoughts, so let me know what you guys think. I've reviewed each of these separately in the last year or two, so I'm going to focus on the highlights and the differences. Each of them have an upscale cabin with plenty of soft touch materials, even extending onto the dashboard, especially in the Mazda 3. And here in the CX-30, if you look closely, you'll see a difference in the dashboard design, along with taller door cards, because the body is taller than what you'll find with the Mazda 3, which should make it easier to get in and out of. But the driving position itself is identical. A standout attribute for our Mazda bros here are tactile physical inputs for basically everything, from your HVAC controls to the steering wheel buttons and the infotainment controls, which are placed where my hand naturally rests. That way you don't need to raise a finger in order to use the infotainment system while driving. I love it for that, but not everyone does. In fact, some people passionately hate this because it is smaller than what you'll get in most other cars and a couple functions take a few extra steps. You can use it as a touchscreen, but only on the turbo models. Plus, you'll have to plug in your phone for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on the more affordable versions. The digital cluster, on the other hand, is standard, but it has very limited functionality. Mazda isn't known for being tech savvy. The trade-off is that these are refreshingly simple. And if you're looking for a straightforward buying experience, let me recommend Royal South Mazda in Bloomington, Indiana. The friendly, community-focused dealership that let me test drive a couple of cars to make today's video possible. If you're in the market, check them out. I also appreciate that every model will come with soft rest points for my knees and elbows. The seats are touch firm and they are narrow around the shoulders, but elsewhere I've found them to be supportive, well-shaped, and go with a preferred and you'll have lumbar adjustment. That grade will also get heated front seats and a sunroof. Even the Select Sport, which I have here, comes with leatherette upholstery. Spend more money and you can get things like a head-up display, heated steering wheel, or a 12-speaker Bose sound system with a subwoofer in the back that's punchy and crisp with well-placed speakers. But Mazda shoots themselves in the foot in two areas. Visibility is one. The small windows make this feel like a fortress. The Sedan 3 might improve the view out of the side, but no matter the model, the back seat is cramped. The CX-30 does have a few advantages. The floor is a little lower, allowing for more thigh support in the rear. There's an inch more headroom too, and most come with console vents, something unavailable with the Mazda 3. Sitting behind myself at six foot three is predictably punishing, like asking Gordon Ramsay to rate your boiled hot dogs, but even shorter adults won't have nice things to say. The cargo space is mid-pack. It's fairly long, has a decent height, and a spare tire is standard on all. According to the tape measure, the spaces are identical with the CX-30 having precisely two inches more of height. 
Go with a sedan Mazda 3 and the trunk is longer, yet shorter. Hopping into the back seat, my head grazes the roof and my knees are pinched by the grab handles, similar to its crossover brother. While the CX-30 does hold an edge, both should be a passive aggressive fine for a small family. Up front, most of what was said about the CX-30 remains true here. So let's talk about the differences. The one that's most surprising to me is the improvement in quality and accents. You'll notice this with the metal Bose speaker grills. The smaller door panels also have less of this cheaper plastic material. And maybe I'm seeing things, but the panel gaps in the Mazda 3 are tighter too. It seems like the CX-30 took more cost-cutting measures. And it's not like I'm sitting in the Top Dog Mazda 3. This one is just the preferred trim. I appreciate some of the subtle details in the Mazda 3's design compared to the CX-30. So far, it seems the Mazda 3 has a slight advantage in quality, and the CX-30 holds a lead in the back seat and cargo department. What I'm more curious about is the driving experience. Each of these are competent in their respective classes. In fact, even their base 2.5 liter inline four makes 191 horsepower and outperforms a lot of their competition. Here in the Mazda 3, I'm pleased with that engine, but the 250 ponies that you get on premium with the Mazda 3 Turbo will make just about any of its foes tremble. While you may shave off a few tenths with premium, I got to 60 in 6.1 seconds on regular. Yet, the focus here was not on performance. It was on effort. Thanks to the dynamic pressure turbocharger, it spools up quickly at low RPM. There's great response and enough mid-range power that the six-speed automatic really doesn't need to downshift a whole lot. It's relaxed, and I'm happy that Mazda offers this, even if it does make a sizable dent in your gas mileage. But now let's transition to the naturally aspirated version. The six-speed automatic shifts smooth. It also takes off smooth, no matter which engine it's paired up to. It's a linear experience, but having more gears would help the naturally aspirated model feel a little more alive. But I should also note that the hatchback models get a slightly more aggressive final drive ratio, which improves things a little bit. Nitpicks aside, I'm happy with this powertrain and I'm even more pleased that Mazda still offers the light, communicative, satisfying six-speed manual transmission. It won't trick you into thinking you're driving a Miata, but it's enjoyable and easy to operate. That one is only available with the premium hatch. That's gonna be front-wheel drive. All-wheel drive will be standard with the carbon edition and the turbo models. Mechanically, the all-wheel drive system is the same between the Mazda 3 and CX-30, but the software changes. So with both of them, this primarily operates as front-wheel drive. It will kick power to the rear in inclement weather, cornering hard, or during hard acceleration and whatnot. What makes the Mazda 3 different is that you have a traction control off button, and this is going to give you a little bit more freedom. And with that stability control off, it will let you kick out the rear end. In the CX-30, instead, you have an off-road traction button, which will use the brakes to stop spinning wheels and redirect power to the corners that have the most traction. I've seen this system in action and it works well. Its biggest limitation is really the eight inches of ground clearance and its sizable front overhang. But it's nice to see that Mazda has tailored the all-wheel drive system toward each individual purpose. With the naturally aspirated model, expect zero to 60 to come up in about eight seconds. It does a decent job at kicking down in time at highway speed. We're revving about 2000 RPM at 65 miles per hour and road and tire noise are pretty subdued. For a car you can get below 30 grand, it's hard to name a better freeway cruiser. The thing that stands out the most about the Mazda 3 is the handling. The steering is incredibly predictable. Part of that is thanks to the way it builds up in weight, which is also not too heavy, not too light. Yeah, it doesn't have as much steering feedback as something like a Mazda CX-5, but the aforementioned qualities along with its precision helps it feel natural. And even as you bring it up to more speed, body roll is well under control too. Equip this with the turbo and it's quick on a back road, but in no configuration is this 
really a direct competitor to something like a Civic Si or Subaru WRX. It's not that eager to turn in, nor is it that flat through a corner. On a tattered Indiana back road, the Mazda 3 sedan may teeter toward the firm side of the compact class, and you can still feel the slight jitteriness of the torsion beam rear suspension when hitting several bumps one after another. But even with the 18-inch wheels, over your small to medium-sized imperfections, this is more than livable. It's smooth over undulations, but if you want the most forgiving car in the class, I'd still point you toward the Subaru present. Behind the wheel of the Mazda CX-30, even with all-wheel drive, it's just a few hundred pounds more than the car I hopped out of. But after driving the naturally aspirated CX-30 a little bit longer, I've noticed that for whatever reason, the tuning in the 3 seems a little bit more refined. The CX-30 shifts were more noticeable on occasion. Thankfully, at highway speed in the CX-30, road and tire noise are also kept down. To a similar level to the Mazda 3, there might be a touch more wind noise, but I can't see that being a complaint in either of these. While the CX-30 does have a utility advantage when it comes to the all-wheel drive system, you won't have any advantage when it comes to towing because neither of these are rated by Mazda to do so. While there's hardly a difference in fuel mileage, each suffer from a tiny gas tank. Around corners with the CX-30, I find another interesting difference. The steering is a little bit heavier. Maybe this is to feign a more substantial feel, which I suppose it does that, but I think the average person would probably prefer how the Mazda 3 goes about its business. There's also a little bit more body motion in the CX-30, something that you would expect. It not only has a little bit more weight to deal with, it also has a higher center of gravity. Thankfully, you still have that precise, natural feeling steering. It requires very little corrections. With just a hint of feedback, I would label each of these the most enthusiast-friendly cars in the class. Over the same appalling back road, the CX-30 is equally jittery and might just be a, a hair stiffer. You're gonna feel most of the medium-sized brakes in the pavement. Still, I would not label it unforgiving, and the car feels well in control at all times. It just doesn't have a leg up on its smaller brother. According to the IIHS, both of these are top safety pick pluses. And when it comes to active driving aids, they have the usual stuff for the segment while also adding standard blind spot monitoring. What's missing is a true lane centering system on a vast majority of models, unless you spend nearly $40,000 on a premium plus turbo. And even then, it doesn't work all that well. But at least you can depend on each of them for a long time. Mazda lately has been killing it when it comes to reliability. They're using proven powertrains that are built in-house and are mostly devoid of common issues. The most noteworthy problem came from oil consumption in 2021 with the turbocharged models. Each of them come with an updated cylinder deactivation on the base engine, a technology that was initially linked to some vibrations back in 2020, but complaints have vanished. These two share other common issues related to cheap brakes, weak AC, and autonomous braking bars. At first, CX-30 owners had some qualms with warped windshields and draining batteries, but nothing too consistent. The Mazda 3 had a few more issues with quality control initially, from bad screens to easily chipping paint, the latter of which I would still look out for. There was also an airbag problem that has since been fixed. Overall, both have had above average reliability, and owner reviews on Cars.com and Edmunds confirm this, so I wouldn't have a guilty conscience recommending either to people that care about longevity. I've driven the CX-30 and the Mazda 3 on countless occasions at this point, but after driving them back to back for the first time, there are more subtle differences than I was expecting. Without a doubt, I can still say the CX-30 is the better value. You're physically getting more car for the same price, but at the same time, you still get what you pay for with the Mazda 3. Its advancement and refinement does not go unnoticed. However, the chance that most people shopping for a 30 grand ish compact will pay extra for that is slim. They will, however, appreciate nuances like console vents, improved support and headroom in the rear, and a taller cargo hold. It will also be hard for them to overlook standard all wheel drive. 
as I said in my full review, they cost cut in the right places during their mission to bring a premium crossover to this price point. As a result, the CX-30 wins as my broad recommendation between the two. But I was actually more impressed by the Mazda 3. The tighter panel fitment and slightly better materials round out the cabin nicely. The manual transmission availability and lower center of gravity makes it feel more athletic and the exterior style looks more cohesive. I can sense more of Mazda's passion in the three, and that's what makes it my personal choice. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like to help me make a fool of the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and consider becoming a channel member for an additional podcast and to help me take the channel to another level. I'll catch you in the next one.